The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. do a show. Catches me off guard sometimes. It's Monday morning. Feels like a Thursday, though. This is Click This, the Kevin Nash podcast. He's Kevin. I'm Sean. Did you read the, the, the comment where somebody said that every time they watch the uh, animated open, they feel like it's a gay pickup uh, scene? And my, my response to that is... <clears throat> Yeah, what am I doing on the corner exactly? My, no, my, 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 my response is, and? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you don't know how we met. Yeah. What do you think we just started doing shows? This history, man. What the hell am I doing on the corner? Oh, God. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, listen, you're, you're Will you're Osprey. Air, you're, air, you're airing off after, after being in, in, in B's box. I don't, I don't want that on my leather. There's a good uh, uh, redo if we ever want to bring up B's box. <laughs> um, your Will Ospreay comments uh, made news. Never know what part of the show is going to make news. There's sometimes the obvious stuff, right? When we're covering something and I'm like, okay. Oh, I like, I, I, I like, you know, it, it, it was funny because 80. I would say 90% of the people that um, had a comment, like, especially on X, like that I read the, the line where they just, they you know, they went after me. Which is great because, I mean, I love it because it just, it gives me a chance to go through and, like, block more people. people. <laughs> yeah, just get those people are out of my life because yeah. they, like, I guess... What about a shirt I got blocked by Nash? It's kind of a club, you know. Yeah. It's kind of an on. I'm in it. And, yeah, uh, and you I never it. did I ever tell you the story about the guy that showed up in New York at WrestleCon? And he said, dude, you blocked me. And I said, I, I don't block you unless you do something to piss me off. So obviously it was for a reason. He said, will you unblock me? I said, yeah, for a hundred bucks. So he says, you'll unblock me. I said, yeah, give me a hundred bucks. So he gave me the hundred bucks, and you right there, I, you I pulled him. I pulled him up, and I unblocked him. I watched him as he was walking out. As soon as he went through the door, I blocked him. He turns that's such around, a fucking carny thing to do. He turns around and walks back to me, and he goes, "Dude, you blocked me." I said, "The hundred bucks was to be unblocked. I didn't tell you for how long." And he goes, "You're a dick." I said, "See." It's right there underneath the bottom of your tongue. You hate me. That's unbelievable. <laughs> so if That's you're hilarious. out there, next time I, I'm someplace in the New York area, and you, I'm actually there to the 26th. I'm in New York City someplace. So I'm signing. So uh, April? Sh- yeah. I mean, I, I think it's the 20, maybe the 27th. 26th is a, is a Friday. 27. So the 27th. Yeah. How long are you there for? Are we getting a steak? What are we doing? No, I'm, I'm, I am, um, I get in the night before the last flight. I go to the whatever that wrestle thing is. I don't know what that's what it's called. Mm. It's one of those wrestling stores. There's two of them. I think I'm wrestling the universe. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. In Brooklyn or Queens? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't. Mm. I just, but I, I have, um. A signing Sunday, so I'm, I'm I'm taking a five o'clock five fifteen flight out of uh, Kennedy and flying to Phoenix, and then I'm going to uh, I sign. Yeah, there's there's my meet and greet. Okay, so uh, let's see. This will air the wrestling right, so universe. If you're watching this Monday, it'll be this weekend at Wrestling Universe. Yeah. What are you, you getting in? You said Friday night? I get in Friday night. Last flight. 
I can. I mean, I'll, I'll, send, I'll talk to I'm you. Sleep. I'll be asleep. No, I, I might. I might get in at nine o'clock though. We sleep. might be able. To, I, mean, I might be able to go get a fucking uh, pork chop someplace. One of those crazy places you go to. Oh, we'll go to the old Hickory or something. Get a mutton chop. Yeah, I get a mutton chop. But uh, <laughs> and then I go to Phoenix. Uh, sign on Fe- Phoenix. I have sign on Sunday. Then I'm going to uh, with a uh, to a baseball game to Dodgers uh, Diamondbacks game on uh, on Monday. All right. Very so, good. Wait, is Atlantic City happening? What's the story with that? I have, we, we I talked we talked it just said no no okay well, that's the answer now. um so but, it, yeah. but it, 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 he's the guy has other things he's got some things going on and it's just like I just don't want to do it's like a nostalgia thing it's like you know nineties wrestling eighties wrestling like that kind of thing. That ain't my bag. Because of the identity or because it won't draw? I just, I, I, I don't want to um, limit myself to, I mean, it's, you know, I do this every week too. I mean, you know, there's people that, there's a lot of people with that when I do a signing, they come up to, they come up to me and, and say, you know, listen to your guys' show. And, yeah, about the show, right. Yeah. Okay. Z Town Train uh, was listening last week or watching, and he says, This is such a great show. Big Kevin Sean still have killer chemistry, excellent audio and video production. We'll take credit for it all. And it's just different. Kevin Nash still oozes cool, even 25 years after me and my buddies started rooting for Diesel. And Sean is still so great at communicating and research. I do no research. Sean has such a great mix of wrestling, nerd, and normal guy. He's relatable. Thank you guys for the show. All right, Z-Town, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Merlin, that misunderstanding apparently had Tony Khan in fear of his life. I'm assuming Tony Khan doesn't have siblings, as I've seen toddler disagreements more deadly. Steve, what day What day is that? That, uh, that Atlantic City thing? Nineties wrestling con July twelfth through July fourteenth. Yeah. Who else is there? Eric, Scott. Who's on the top buff? Kiddo and kid. You're on the fucking poster, man. You're on the poster. I think I'm in. Fucking Detroit. You better let someone know. No, I, I, <clears throat> I, I, I mean, somebody needs to. Uh... Kevin Nash podcast. Hold on a minute. Todd Gordon live show. What is it? What is that? Fifty dollars. That's my price. Zoom in. Heads are gonna roll. Fifty for what? Scroll up, Steve. What is Just that? see what the uh, see what the category is. Price for uh live show. Kevin, oh, our podcast. They're selling a live podcast for $50. Wow. Are, she, are we going to Atlantic City? Steve, what are you doing on the 12th? You got to engineer I, a show, apparently. If Steve can get a fucking uh, orange Jetta, I'm in. You got to fly my, yeah, good luck flying. You got to fly, you got to fly my fucking boy first class from, from LA. <laughs> that, that's, that'll set you back. So, all right, hold on. And Sean, here. while I'm there, I'll work on the Todd Gordon one, which I'd imagine involves you. I don't know. I, <laughs> Todd texted me about a month ago. He goes, hey, you're going to be in Atlantic City, I hear. I say, why do you hear that? He said, because a guy called me to book me and said, you're doing a podcast with Kevin. I'm doing, I'm doing Eric's show too then. Eric's okay, so fifty. I'm doing Eric's. Co- I'm doing Coachman. everybody's. So Todd Bill, Gordon is thirty-five. I was gonna say, where are we priced? We better fucking be. All right, after thirty-five. All right, so we're priced the same as Eric. Kevin, are you comfortable with that? Huh? Uh, what are you uh, doing? Us and Eric so, yeah, it, 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 
it could be a thousand dollars. It doesn't fucking matter. If we're not going to be there. I don't even. I, I, let me <laughs> see what date that is. What is it? The twelfth. Look it up. Let come on. Stop Finally yelling a, at me. A gig I don't have to fly for. Come on. God, no wonder these people say sometimes it's like we're at each other's throats. Oh, this is one seventy five for a two day VIP. Oh, I, I think I'm fucking. I think I'm on. I think I get home from uh, Detroit. I'll have to look. We, you want, you want to laugh? That'll be the fucking week. That'll be the month that I'm in Florida in the summer, and I'll have to fly Obviously. home. I'll have to fly home. <laughs> well, we can fly together. I was going to say, I can go out of Daytona, I guess. I'm yeah, closer. we can fly together. <clears throat> All right. Or I could always pick you up in that uh, red Mustang and make it a gay... Make- Make it a, like a cruising type thing. A little bit. I had the yeah. stick shift mark on my chest <laughs> after the. <laughs> Jeffrey Robinson wrote us and said, um, oh, Jeffrey emailed me and said, my grandmother passed away last week and she listened to your Click This podcast and absolutely loved you guys. I hope you never stop. Thanks so very much. Well, Jeffrey, I replied and said that I would give her a shout out. I don't have her name. Uh, you didn't get back to me with that, but we'll call her Grandma Robinson. Cuckoo, cachoo. Um, Godspeed, Grandma. We we got them all. We got fucking Grandma. You just seduce me. We got grandmas. We got. Wesley had a good race. It's appropriately, it's labeled a con. So the uh, Atlantic Brilliant. City. Yeah. God, it's so funny because when you think of Atlantic City, you, you really can't think of anybody that was kind of a known con <laughs> man in that that area. Not in the Northeast? Is, uh, is it a wonder that Ripley started in New York before they went to Venice or Rome? Uh, um, yeah, you know what, Wes? I guess, you know what? You're you're right. I think I did uh, when I pitched you the artwork. I've never noticed you had a tattoo before. What you, is that the American flag? Or... <laughs> no, Please it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a pirate flag. The Tampa Bay fan? It's, no, it's a... It's a uh, mistake. It's an attitude. It's an attitude. I was working Pirates. at Deutsche Bank at the time, and I was—I had to retain my rebel spirit. Um, yeah, that's, I did. That's, I did. That circumcision wasn't enough. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did tell you that, Wes. That pulled me in the car. I don't know if I said standing on the corner, swinging my purse and my red shoes, but uh, I did bring up the corner. Uh, the Kenji Rosanga Arena says that thumbnail that looked like Simply Red's Mick Hucknall. I did look like Simply Red. I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize his name was Mick Hucknall, but uh, I'll I was keep holding back the. Years. I was holding back the years. Um, holding oh. back the years. This is this is Kevin as um what's his name from Boardwalk Empire uh, Atlantic City is this what we're Lucky doing Thompson. the Bush- the Buscemi what is it yeah what was his name again I did two Lucky episodes Thompson of that Nucky right yeah never watched an episode of that yeah I did two the two I was in were good no, I, I, I said I, I, never, I never I never I never watched it I, I never I. I never got invested. I, that's, let's just say. That's I think it was those, good, but I never. I got think invested. the only thing I've watched this kind of a period piece that's anywhere near that is probably the Gangs of New York. It's a good one. <laughs> Germinator three fifty six. You all got to stop photoshopping Nash and Oliver this week. Really creeped me out. People love it. They love the fucking thumbnails. We've been over with the thumbnails the last few two weeks. In a, two in a row. They're they're drawn like <laughs> flies. Props to uh, our uh, team. Yes. Mr. Berger says, I remember as a kid running around with a buddy, burning up model cars, and ended, ending, with him convin- ending with convincing him that I should put the camel clutch on him. We didn't hang out a whole lot after that to be a kid in the early 80s. So, Kev, that was a thing, I guess, the burning up, you're making a model car for hours and then setting it on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mr. Green, they got that crowd at Wembley because pro wrestling events from American companies is relatively rare 
for them there in England compared to here in the States. I think when they try to go back, if they still do, given how AEW is sliding off cliff, they won't be packing that stadium like they did the first time. You guys always draw big, Kev, when you went out there for... Yeah, we always draw, we always drew well. God, I mean, there's not a there's not a town that I I don't think I've, I I haven't run in the UK. But the, also the the arenas were a lot smaller back then. Like I don't know what arena they were in in Birmingham, but we were in that NEX or NEC or whatever it was back then. Mm. Smaller. You, um. Well, uh, what network? What what did you air? On? Was it Sky Sports? Is that what the what they used to air on? I don't know what the oh. hell. Or was Sky Sports? Sky Sports might be uh, Canada. Can't remember. They had Sky. They had, they had, they had I think it, they had Sky Sports. They did have Sky. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess I, I guess that kind of is. I was kind of incredulous. I was looking at those clips. When um, they were doing that Young Bucks segment where they were going to show that footage. So I made sure I watched it. And I all that lead up, that was a legit house, man. And uh, it's, just, it's just such a disparity to what you see now. Especially when you, if you're on socials and you see the fans are taping from, they're yeah. not restricting the angle. You know, you're, you're getting the whole thing. And that's compared to that that fucking. And you, you could be you could be actually filming a meltdown, or not. The Tony Khan meltdown on stage. That's that's what it said on on X. I just re, reposted it. You I did. Get, did you now? Some, I wanted to get some feedback. Did you? I got some feedback. Yeah. Positive. Did you get a chance to explain yourself at least? I did. I did. I I, I was was more than able to. Uh, yeah, that was, I said I reposted that. Right. I got I got I got uh, I got some feedback, and I was able to give some feedback. And did you get I, some feedback from anyone that might have been in that clip that you were able to give some? No, feedback I, I didn't back get any feed. No, I didn't get any. Feedback. Did you get a question? Um, from anyone who might have been in that clip, might have. Did you get an opportunity to, to at least tell him, give him, you know, a piece of the Nash Nash wisdom yeah. at the feet of the learning tree, the Nash learning tree? Yes. Might it? Might I it. don't know how I don't know how it landed. It 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 I mean to me it was I think it was kind of like, okay. Might it have started as an answer to that person's question and then maybe spiraled into some advice for that person's company? A little bit. One to give unsolicited advice. I mean, you well, know. listen. Hey. Hopefully, hopefully, it was taken as the gift that it is. It's no different than when you see somebody and they never changed a tire before, and they jack the car up first and then try to get the lug nuts off, and you tell them. Dude, you need to have the pressure of the car's weight so you can undo the lug. Just little simple things like that. I don't think you're being a dick. I think you're being no. Yeah, that's just. It's all how you, you say it, and I think you. If were, you don't mm -hmm. know how, if you have no idea whatsoever how to change a tire, maybe somebody that's changed some tires in their life could give you a little bit. Of a fucking first step. And it's all how you present it. And I think you, who you, who, who does have a pretend, propensity to be a dick sometimes. Yes. Um, I think we're very uh, succinct. Not disrespectful, helpful. You know? I think I, maybe I even would, said I, something like, "I believe me, I hope you succeed. You know, competition's I, a good thing. I would, I, and no, and, 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 and in all honesty, man, I, I absolutely want AEW to succeed. Number one, I've got friends that work there, right? You know, in production, and uh, I mean, in, in all different aspects. Mm. 
not just guys that are they're in front of the camera. And I think it's 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 you know if they're being a viable option is um is huge for the the longevity of the of the of the, of the business. You know my theory. I'll tell you what my theory is. That video has been reposted all over the place, of course, right? But the individual that reached out could have reached out to anybody. We reached out to you. And I think they wanted some advice. That's what I think. I think he, he wanted some advice. Didn't well, want to th- necessarily have to ask for it. He got it. But he got it. Right. Exactly. And I mean, I just, it was short, sweet, simple. Yeah. Wasn't, I, as I said, I, I, I handled that. With respect, because I have respect for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, hope, I, I think I, you it, know. I, I think hopefully that it came we, across that way. When I we think talk, when we talk about AEW, mm-hmm. okay, let's talk about, um, let's talk about the genesis before it became what it is right now. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to. Uh, I guess it was the first all in or whatever that fucking what it was mm-hmm. called. Mm-hmm. But it was the one it was it was in that I don't know if it was it's called the Sears Arena, but it was that it's the arena that's out from Chicago. I don't know, it holds like eleven thousand. And uh yeah, the Sears Center. And that was Cody versus Dustin. I'm pretty sure was the main event, wasn't it? Guys. First all in, yeah. And I thought that was a, I mean, it was a great, they, I just, I tell everybody that's involved in that situation, because if I'm not mistaken, aren't four of those, whatever they're called now, EVPs or whatever, Mm -hmm. aren't four of the five of them still there? Well, it's the box. It's Hangman. It, it wasn't Kenny one, and then Cody. Was it right? That Cody's the only right. Cody's the only. Cody's one. the only one that's not there. Not ha- Hangman wasn't. No, Bucks, Kenny, and Cody. So, so, so one okay, out so of four. one out of the okay. four. Yeah. So those four. So, so there's still three there, and like I, I saw the. Uh, I watched AW. Um, well, actually, I watched it today because it, 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 it aired last night. And, like, you know, the Bucks start the, their, you know, their entrances, you know, they do the, and it's like, if you're going to do that, that's great. At least go to the gym. Like, the only, the only fucking cut on their bodies if you if you take away the crack of their ass, they don't have a cut on their body. They've now they've now added vests to their their working gear. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's just like. But isn't that the the part of the the gimmick? I don't think they're doing it like Rick Rude used to do it, or like a Bobby Lashley. They used, they, they used to be in shape. But isn't they that kind of the thing now that not to be in shape? I don't know. No, no, the no, other, no, no, no. The, the pose, other, the, the other, still the, doing the pose. Yeah, but still, the, the, in the immortal words, I think it was Billy Graham. Who? I, so I remember Scott told me like we, we were doing. I, I did a, a most muscular pose like one time when I was Oz, and he said, "Man," he said. I'm going to tell you what, I don't think it was Billy Jack or maybe it was Billy Graham. I don't know. It was one of those guys. He said, man, he said, the thing about posing is if you make posing your your deal, he said, once your body's gone, you're you're done. You know? Yeah, it's so, so true. Yeah, so because, I, you know, Buddy Landell never had that problem. Right. You can work forever. You know? That's when you're Johnny Wad Holmes, right? And that's your only thing. That's it. The day that's once, that drawbridge yeah, once, stops going up, you're done. That's it, man. So, but um, 
I don't know. You, you, you've got, you've got, so you've got three of the four guys that started that. I think they need to sit, sit down and have a conference and say, do you remember how like excited we were and like our, the vision we had and where we were going? And like, I think you gotta, I think you gotta, gotta go back to, to, to grassroots there because it, whatever they're doing right now ain't working. But that's an interesting question, though. Now that it's become, you see, it's not the little engine that could anymore. They have two nights on TV, um, you know, owned by a a, a formidable financier. Well, I guess um, that's great, but but it's bad, not the, the the but bad TV in any form or fashion is just bad TV. But I'm saying, how do you go? back to that grassroots feeling when they've spent so much time making it look like did the WWE. And that's that's a mistake well, we talked okay. about. We let, talked about that as a mistake. Let, let, let's let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. So uh Sasha Banks, whatever her name is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her gear looks like I made it. She I mean there's not a semblance of when she comes out that she's the same character is worth the, it, it, it's like it's like seeing a, a an 88 i mean i'm gonna go back it's like seeing a 1977 cutlass two-door sedan that had the t-tops and then seeing it now and you're like didn't age well that, that's that's not that's not sasha banks Look at how like her 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 fucking outfit's bush. So, but I I meant more when I said trying to look like WWE. I meant more the the production, the stage, the pyro. It um, doesn't. These are all these are I, all been established. I don't think it does. I don't. Think no, I don't think does. it does. But they, they they're trying to project. They're trying to play that league. They're, they're building the model to look like that. Pyro, the stage, the long ramp. Um, it's like it's like having a million dollars to do a, a feature film, and saying, "You know what? I'm I'm thinking along the terms of you know like like something that like you know a Star Wars type feel you know, for, like, for the million bucks. Yeah, for a million bucks. Like no. So what do you do? So so uh, like. You can't go into to the folks at TBS and and go, uh, you know, we're gonna strip it down. We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go. Well, indie I think feel. what you can do, no, but you, what you can do psychology wise is instead of, I think that what they're doing right now is they are just booking matches. Like there's no build up. Like what you need to do is you need to pick. Whatever their, their 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 biggest show coming up in six months, mm -hmm. you know, pick make one, and then from that decide what you want to have on that card, what you want to have as your main. Another thing is there's so many fucking belts on that show, because you can like you know uh, Moxley opened the show last night and mm -hmm. he just won the. I used to call it the New Japan belt. Yeah, it's the IPW whatever it is. Yeah, you know, so he came out. And he's got it. He he's got a belt, and then the next guy comes out's got another belt from some other thing. You know, somebody else has got a belt on, and yeah, he's got a belt. And then Samoa Joe's they got a belt. Then I'm like, well, who the fuck is that, that? Okay, so and then they have these six mans where nobody has a belt, and you realize, okay, these are this guys. This must be the shitbirds. Because there's no there's no gold in on, on any of these cats. So you, you book a big show down the road this and you, summer, and you, and this you, fall, and you, and you and you and you yeah, and you book that shit backwards. How do we get to, to where these? That's you do the exact same thing <clears throat> that Vince did with the the pay per view where they brought in Tyson. But so you don't think they're doing that? Every episode of no. Guest Booker that I used to host with any Booker, they always said. Where are we going? And then it was, how do we get there? 
six weeks out, uh, six months out, five months out, four months out. And I, I, I just I figured I that that was that. the exact, you, how you else do you do it? You can't tell me last night if you watched the Chris Jericho, Taz, hook angle that that has a big pay, steel cage payoff coming, a three-way uh, dance. I just, I, I just, I, I know I don't watch the, the program very often. Um, and what that did last night was kind of pretty much explain to me why I don't because you know it just I I just didn't get it I don't get why like Chris pushed Taz T Taz took the Ed, Ed Asner bump um, yeah well he had a bad that sell on the bad knee well Luke Grant, wounded him but I mean yeah but I mean you know he's talking shit about his kid and then the the I don't care how many like, layers of clothes you put on the, the Chris had fucking beat that kid's ass in twenty seconds. All right, so right, so there's some if there were some mistakes in in that angle. First of all, and I don't understand why Chris is going along with it, being backed into the corner by. I mean, but it, it, Chris has got to have Chris has got to have an a, an exit strategy, or. A, He's booking his own. He's got to be booking his own shit, and he he knows where he's going with. And I I would I mean I would if 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 I was Tony and Chris told me let me handle this I'll I'll I'll, I'll get us there. I would I would that would be one of the few people on that roster that yeah. I'd say okay Chris if you're going to get us there you'll get us there. But as My far as mm -hmm. as far as Taz being any worth anything. After he basically got thrown, he, he just. Well, my interpretation was uh, was that Chris, in deference to his friend Taz, was not fighting back and and being like, a, you know, just a mistake, just a mistake. Think about what you're doing here. Whereas if he wasn't Taz's kid, he would have pummeled him. that he was showing restraint for taz that was my interpretation because the, the, that you, picture that you're looking at right there yeah but is, i mean is, you, is you, not you is not rooted you, in reality do you throw do you throw his dad down to show restraint um well it, it, he only went down because of the bad knee i think chris didn't realize that in the storyline just kind of pushed him out of the way but he didn't want to hit his kid in front of him. He was. Uh, Why would you even touch Taz? It was a little out of if character. You I guess, my, but... If you touch my, if you touch my, if you touch my dad, shit was on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was eight, but fuck, I don't give a shot. Uh, I was anyway. I was eight. Five, I was, you were I was five a, foot I was, nine. Yeah, I was bigger than fucking Hook. That's for sure. I just would. I don't know if he had like fucking big big league chew he was putting in his mouth. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. I don't get at all what his fucking gig is. It's it's like it's he's it's brutal. Yeah. He's very very Freddie Miles from fucking <clears throat> Ripley. Are you, they are you, they you, giving are they giving him this because of because Taz is involved with the company? Does that happen? God, I hope not. I hope that somebody that's, I mean, he's not going to draw a fucking dime. Ever. Right. Well, unless maybe he has a battle with a transgender female in Oklahoma. We will get to that. But first, um, I want to remind everyone listening all of our men out there that um there is finally some a company that has thought about us in their designing personal grooming products kevin and i have talked about it we love a little mando in our day um kevin loves a little mando in his sneakers too for god's sakes takes the uh takes the wipes drops them in the sneakers puts them by the door fresh the next day um listen do you guys just shower and hope for the for the best the rest of the day hit the pits and head out 
Well, when you take a shower and hope it's enough to keep the BO and various odors away all day, don't shower and hope. You use Mando Whole Body Deodorant in its various forms. There's stick. There's the cream. There are the wipes. There's the shower gel. Um, looking at it right there. It's a wonderful set. Showering removes the odor, but because of the high pH in soaps and body washes, your body odor is going to come back with a vengeance. Mando controls odor in a new way by lowering the skin's pH. This is science. We're not just covering it with fragrance here, okay? Lowers the skin's pH. Goddamn scientists are involved with this, for Christ's sake. It helps keep your skin odor-free for longer. The result, no more midday showers or periodic pit sniff tests. Mando's clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 freaking hours. So even if you miss a shower, guess what? You're going to still smell great. So stop the shower stop the shower and hope routine, okay? And save the hope for important things, like trying to figure out what the hell's going on with this angle with Hook backing a terrified Chris Jericho into a corner while uh, Taz rolls around under the rope. Didn't get back up, did he, Kev? Kind of. I didn't say this. Kind of. Did he leave the ring, or was he just kind of rolling around on the floor? I don't know. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm lost. Um, listen, was, guys, that, be, was mm -hmm. that before Orange Cassidy? Was Orange Cassidy the next match? Uh, it might have been. I think so. I, I, th I might have blown. Orange Cassidy that fought that. It was a, a very, um, pear-shaped black man. Uh, yes. Yes, pear-shaped. Guys, uh, listen, we got a special offer, okay? New customers are going to get $5 off Mando's best-selling starter pack. Use the code click, KLIQ, at Mando.com. Um, let us know how it goes, guys. We're on socials. Tag us. Let us know the product, okay? There's the whole body little, deodorant. I've got a little uh, Mando on right now. You're rocking a little Mando? Yeah, I, I just uh, I was out today running and doing some errands. I got a little uh, got a little beefaroni going as I went ahead and uh, hit the pits. I've got I've got Mando right by the uh, I've got a, a canister of Mando right by the back door. That's phenomenal. Yep. Yeah, just just nice. for a little just, fresh up, freshen up sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I mean I do it for me. I'm not going to run into anybody. It just. Right, and you know what? I gotta say, it it is a soothing scent. It is. It not, is. It's not overpowering not at all. It is. No. It is. A, it is a very gentle but wonderful. It's created by a doctor. Okay, you saw firsthand how Bo was being misdiagnosed, mistreated. Guys, it's aluminum free, baking soda free, cruelty free, dye free. It's vegan. Let's control that odor. Every part of your body, you'll find some uh, key spots. Everybody's built a little different that you might want to hit before. Um, a little bit on that landing strip, a little on the bit old, down there. Uh, a little, little, little touch on the taint. Guys, we have that discount code. Don't forget, okay? Uh, get yourself hooked on the uh, great smelling whole body deodorant. Uh, new customers, five dollars off a starter pack exclusive code that equates to over forty percent off your starter pack. Use the code click K L I Q at shopmando.com. S H O P M A N D O dot com. Use the code click. Um, in case your buddy trips and falls in your crotch, what's that, man? Well, you're soaking it. Yeah, or, or you get or you <laughs> pull someone through your Mustang window. You never uh, know where they're going to land. They go in head first. Just be uh, be prepared for them. Britt, uh, one of our uh, Britt, one of our long time, rather lovely, um, uh, eleven soft members who get to be part of the show every week in here, which you can as well. By going to clickthistv.com. Um, she said the internet's gonna fry Kevin for saying Hook won't try. Is he that fucking over? What? Like maybe like all the eleven year olds that see uh, that identify uh -huh. have an identification thing. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know, man. I mean, I, you 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 might you guys might be right. Maybe he's gonna get over, but I don't know. Every time I watch, it looks it looks closer and closer to a pandemic in the uh, building that they run. So. You did make mention of this before um, the uh, Oklahoma Commission um, taking issue with coming um, after AEW. AEW now rule breakers. I'll tell you. Let me use the exact language uh, from our 
this is this is very this this is difficult to digest so they said quote the commission will not approve sanctioning permits between human participants and not humans not the case here between males and females uh, a male participant is a person of the heterogametic sex born with XY chromosomes. A female participant is a person born of the homogemetic sex with XX chromosomes. Thank you for the science lesson to our friends on the Oklahoma Commission. We understand that. Now, here's the question I have. I get that for boxing. I get that for sports with uh, legitimate competitive nature. Uh, the New York Knicks versus like the New York Liberty. You would not have the men play the women. Uh, you would not have boxers cross gender. This is wrestling. For years, I go back to China, and it, w you guys work together. Um, no different than the little guy who hoists a bigger guy and slams him. There's a little bit of help happening there, okay? So there's no legitimate contest. Is this just another bullshit excuse for um, government agencies to further um, to, to, to take a group, a class, and further vilify them in the press by making them I, I, I want to use I, I, I'm being <laughs> careful to use the right nouns the, the pronouns get confusing got to use the right nouns to to take an underserved or, or a maligned class by so many in this country you know I, I happen to live in an area where you know we don't <laughs> deal with that kind of bias too much um, but it's out there I'm not saying Oklahoma would be one of those places but is this just another place to flex the mighty MAGA muscle? I don't even think it's that. I think it's the uh, the antiquated commissions that they have when wrestling was still considered like so kayfabe that it was kind of shooty. Remember, we, we used to have like you'd go in to be like. The commission doctors there and all these guys would walk in and their blood pressure would be, you know, off the fucking charts. I says, I'm like, I've never seen anybody in my life be told by one of these commission doctors that they couldn't participate. Right. Because they all knew as the guy was smoking a cigarette while he did his blood pressure that it was a work. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't going to go out there and do anything. You know? It wasn't yeah. like he was going to run the ball 30 times. It's like, it's just, it's so, it's. That was a racket. It was for many years that the, the and, commission and, and in the locker room was a racket. And Oklahoma, so Oklahoma, because they've got the racket still set up, they try to politicize it because they realize they don't, but they don't have a box on it for wrestling. But they're going to add, they're going to add one. But you don't think this is political? Oh, I absolutely do in Oklahoma. Okay. This is Nyla Rose. It, it was a match. Uh, actually, the specific match uh, that they're making reference to was uh, at the Paycom Center back. It was in December. Um, was that the place in Tucson? To, no, uh, it was in uh, Oklahoma City. So... Um, it became... Uh, actually, there was a... a, a bill in March 2022, I think, in Oklahoma. It became the 13th state in the United States uh, to sign the bill into law banning transgender girls and women from playing on female sports teams. Um, but I think, again, that, that this governs legitimate competition. And um, this wrestling is entertainment. I mean, it's athletic, but it's entertainment. So I don't, I don't think it really applies. Right. Uh, Nyla did uh, tweet, Damn it, Oklahoma, you made me a baby face now. I want to do evil things with my friends, but now I can't. That's pretty funny. Well done, Nyla.
Oh, let's see. You, you know, we covered. I want to talk about Raw for a minute. We'll get back to. I know you're itching to talk about more. Well, yeah, we, I wanted to finish because we had um, we had Orange Cassidy versus that large. Uh, but he put his name up. Is it Steve Taylor? I believe you said pear shaped. Yeah. Pear shaped. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he? Shane at? Taylor. Yeah. Shane Taylor. But whoever did did the commentator, I think I don't know. It was um, I know I know Tony was on, but. He said that he was good with his hands. And just that comment, like, it just, like, subliminally went, in a, in a, like, I'm thinking, the t- the two guys with him were the, they, they, the one guy that's, that's not in the vest, that's in the, uh, is, yeah, the, in the bowling shirt. Yeah. He, th- he throws the worst kicks. On Orange Cassidy, when he goes to outside the ring, I'm just like, oh, God. Like, if, if that's the best you can do, take him, slam his head off the fucking the ring apron, and roll him underneath the ropes. Like, you've got to know your limitations. Mm. If, you're, if your shit's that bad, don't fucking, don't stink it up any, any worse. The big guy didn't do a bad job, mm-hmm. you know? It's just that I, I it was very hard for me to believe that 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 big fucker got his ass beat by somebody that had his hands in his pockets, eighty percent of the match, and then he has a Superman punch that is like it knocked that big dude out. Right. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. the big dude dropped him on his his head like two or three times, but. If it was followed at the, at the end with Osprey and Cesaro, yeah. Well, but the, um... see, Osprey's their star. Yeah, like, he's the guy. So you got you've got to if if Wembley's the show in in September, and that's where you, then you've you've got to you you've got to crown Osprey there, and that's what that that should be your number one goal is to make him the face of your company. Because he he's the he's the guy, and um, though at the same time I did watch a little bit of SmackDown, and I watched AJ, and it's like Osprey needs to get his body in better shape. He how old is Osprey, guys? He doesn't look like, and he's another guy that just doesn't. Everybody looks like indie guys because nobody looks like they take care of themselves. He just turned 30. Yeah. Come on, man. All right. So what so what you're saying is uh, if that's the direction they're going, there should be an emphasis put on uh, building a more physical presence. Remember I said a couple of weeks ago, heavyweight champ, is different than an IC champ, right? Or, you know, and should yeah. should look the part. I mean, it's just like he he, he definitely gets like I watched the, I watched the entire I sped through parts of most of the matches because it's just I watched the Orange Cassidy match, I watched the Jericho uh, hook thing, um, the, I, it just this the tag shit I just. I don't want to watch six man. I, I definitely don't want to watch anything that has multiple tag teams. Like to me, I don't understand how anybody would 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 sit down and say this is an actual fight, and they would sign a, an agreement that states that I will participate in this event, and I will forfeit the winner's purse. Even if I'm not or my partner is not beaten, the other people are beaten. Like mm-hmm. those three way, like the the three way that they had with with Logan, right? You know, it's like if Randy covers uh, Kevin, then Logan loses the belt. Correct. I would never sign. Who 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 would sign up for that? Right. Because they did a thing where he went to cover him in front of him, and he went, hey, what are you doing? I thought we were working this together. I mean, they, they went ahead and, and made a, a mockery of the psychology of the match in the match. Mm-hmm. 
So <laughs> it's, you know, so I, I don't, it, so I'm not going to watch that. And um, though Pac was, I, I, you know, I watched him when he was, when he, when he was at NXT and he's great. He's a super talented guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I watched, I, I watched like, I fat. I I had forgotten that they still do that picture in a picture thing. I got to ask you about this. Oh, Jesus. Now, I think that they're fucking up because I always know when WWE, WWE did it, they they don't do it now, but when they did it, the match always died down. Something would happen. Someone would powder. So the ref, there's communication happening where they know it's picture in picture, go outside. Put on a rest hold, something. If you're for three stoned, minutes. and that right now you've got one of those two things. That I, I'm going to be looking at the cartoon. You're watching Wendy's, work, right? You're and watching I'm, Wendy's, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm looking at the food. It's like I don't really want. It's that's so. But here's my point: during the six man, when um, all day long you can do that, but during Osprey and uh, when you when you when when, like to me, it would be like a, such a selling point if you told me that the main event of the evening was going to be commercial free. So I knew with that that entire match that they're being I mean, because that would draw me to it. But when you when when they get the exact same uh, coverage as. The other shit that you, you know, it's like. During the match, the buck, one of the bucks, I think it was Matthew, took the mic and it's in the picture in picture. And he starts doing the commentary gimmick during the match while they're at commercial. And I'm going, he's supposed to fucking know. Someone's got to tell him you can't do that when we're not on the air. And that was another big difference that because I, I always noticed WWE always went to something that could sit in the corner that wouldn't distract. They clearly there was action all over the place in the picture and picture. Then he took a mic and started talking and we couldn't hear it. They need to let the guys know. Oh, oh open your phone. Hit, hit that number real quick. Uh, we need to let the guys know when we go to picture and picture not to do shit in the ring that we need to hear. Because we're not gonna hear it because we're in picture in picture or in commercial. All right, yeah, we'll, see if, we'll see if he responds to you tonight about that. I don't know. It's it's <clears throat> you can take that. It's a, it was annoying the first time I watched it. I definitely don't want to sit here tonight. And... The um, but something that about really... Pack though. Do you think he got hurt? Did you, you remember the fall he took off the uh, turnbuckle? Because he was going to do something on the turnbuckle, and someone ran over and knocked him. But when he took the bump he didn't like hit the rope or or do the crotch thing he went like he did like a header down into the ring and like landed on his shoulder it looked like it was an awkward yeah, landing look, i don't know if you got hurt yeah they didn't look didn't look but uh i hope he's not hurt um and so then yeah so we we got to uh osprey and claudio um which was a good bet osprey's wildly talented physically i mean he's 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 an acrobat no question um i mean he he knows some i mean he's he's fun to watch and he's really fun to i mean he would be so great to watch against somebody like a lesnar that was because he needs kind of a a goliath to pound the shit out of him Mm. but he like he can't do. You can't sell a, a an uppercut and take a flat back, and then take another uppercut and kip up out of it into a move. It's like, mm. like everything's got to be sold the same. Can you hang your company? See, I, I watch him work, and I think back to. Yeah, this is the old man stuff. The guys I saw on the card back in the day that were the high flyers that you always looked forward to. Guys like uh, Mil Mascaris or uh, 
psychosis, uh, one of the luchas, right? They would come out and be a fun part on the card. But would you hang the company on him? I think he's... He's 30 years old, so he's definitely young enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that he... He'll, he, you know, he's just got to work with. I would love to see him have a match with Moxley. Have they ever worked? Present day or ten years ago? I think we looked up. Uh... No, that was uh, AJ. Him oh, AJ, 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 right. So it's coming. Is the, yeah, is the word see, we that, just got? And that's going to be. Mo Mox is going to work his style. So you're gonna that, that's gonna be very telling, right? You know. Um, in regards to um, oh, what are these? What are these? So this is uh, upcoming dates four sixteen. Oh no no no! I'm sorry. That are was those, are those three way that's the dances? Past. That's the past. Oh, okay. Th these are matches. So Moxley and Osprey wrestled each other uh, April sixteenth, twenty twenty-two. Yeah, that's the only one that that matters. Cause that's the only. Is that New Japan? I'm trying to see the logo. It's so small on my screen. But uh, yeah, okay. So New Japan. All right. I'll watch it. Um. There but was. I just I I, did, mm -hmm. I saw AJ on uh, on SmackDown, and they had a they had a really good finish, and uh, AJ went over. They beat Ray, and uh, AJ stands up, and AJ looks like a god. You know, I mean, he's in such great shape, and he's still a, and you know, AJ's he's forty plus, I think. Mm. I'm just thinking to myself, like that's the man is just such a different when you when you like visibly look at these guys because man it's like they're the WWE guys are you know they're just a it's a different breed of guy yeah you know um while we're on AEW I should bring up the um the video we talked about last week or the clip that they showed in the furtherance of the young bucks angle uh FTR angle um Tony Khan, you've heard of him, uh, spoke on it this week and said that uh, he thought it made sense to use. He was asked, you know, whether the criticism um, has made him regret airing that. And his quote was, quote, I think it made a lot of sense. We've seen the Young Bucks change a lot. We saw them get really dark during the retirement run of Sting. They've only gotten darker and more twisted. That's why they felt. They should play the tape. Um, what does he consider dark? To me, if you're a jack off, <laughs> if you're a jack off, you're dark. The dark would imply something serious, right? Like a like Moxley's a, dark. Way, like, yes, Moxley's a, very Moxley's dark. A, yes, a much dark character. Yeah. Like if somebody told me Moxley fucking stabbed somebody. And killed them on the road. I would, I'd be like, oh, "Fuck, man! I, I feel bad. He's going to fucking do time." I wouldn't be like, "No, oh, bullshit." Right. Like the fun, one of the bucks. Come on, the bucks are. But the, the so the one thing I wanted is to that, say is that good. Is 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 that a good uh, rating? We're looking at ratings here. Uh. AEW Dynamite seven sixty two seven hundred sixty two thousand. No, that's not a good rating. And uh, was it a point two six? What what was the highlight? What was the highest number that show did? Steve, is that for the show with the clip or this week? That was, was last that... night's show. Last I think night's, they did. Okay. I think they did about eight fifty the week with the clip. So naturally, because CM Punk's not on the show the following week. They right. come down to 762, <laughs> which is the whole problem with airing the clip. Yeah. And that was the one thing Tony didn't talk about in defending playing the clip was the the CM Punk fallout. And I the think CM that's Punk, what most people CM were Punk talking chant. about. Yeah, that's what most people, I think, were criticizing yeah. him for. No, I, it's, you know, 
it's his it, it's you know it's his ball he can do it he can, he can kick it like he wants to go kick it over the over under the fucking freeway he can kick it on the freeway i really i mean it, it's i have nothing to do I've, I've got no uh no skin in that game uh but it's just I don't know. Well, you got to defend it's a very, it's a very, it's a very hard show to watch. It's very hard to get involved. It just feels so fragmented. Yeah, you know? but uh, but it's what we got. You're not, you're not watching TNA, are you? Huh? No. Yeah. So. This is the second. This I, is the second horse out there. No, it, it's it's not that I'm not. It's just that it, nothing against TNA. I, I, I mean, I've seen clips. I, I, I watched clips of uh, of different uh, of the different uh, programs that are out there, and sometimes I mean, you know, it's really fucking hard when you are uh, optically when you're used to. It's like, and this is a perfect example. You watch an NFL game on Sunday, okay? I don't care who's who's playing. You turn the channel and you know it's an NFL game. You turn on the US uh, the, the, the USFL anything that, else, yeah? No, but that's that, that hmm. league that's the US whatever the I think yeah the, USFL, the redo of the USFL the, yeah right whatever that league's called now. And I've tried to watch it, and it's just like it's it's like WCW was in '90 when you went to you you ran the Philadelphia Civic Center. It was the it's like the, it was the third tier building in, in town, and it was like doing stand up on a cruise ship. It was fucking brutal. There was twelve hundred smart marks that just screamed fucking. At everybody until Flair came out, <laughs> and they just and they just wooed when he chopped, and that was the only positive shit, you know. I mean, it was just fucking brutal, and that's kind of what you got right now. To whereas you've got the complete opposite on, on WWE, you know, you've got everything. That, like I thought, and and you agreed, and you 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 actually coined the the the, the, the term. That they took the week off. Absolutely, yeah. You know. It was uh, nothing was furthered. Uh, it was not working towards anything. And nobody's character did anything that took them in a new direction. Everything was stagnant. And they, you know, I mean, they didn't really have their. I mean, they didn't have all their guns there. Correct. Yeah, and and, and noticeably absent. It yes. felt. It felt so empty, like the the Cody and Jay in ring. Now, Cody coming off. I mean, it's been two, it's been two Raws since WrestleMania, so he had the big Raw last week. But still, it's a it's a fresh thing. He still got a good no. He got a very good pop. He got a pop, but what I'm saying is, it was a it it was a useless promo. There, there, there was there, there was absolutely no reason except to get him on TV. Did nothing for the angle. Yeah, I don't see that. I don't see those guys. Um, they're they're not that, that that match isn't going to draw money with you with, with. And I mean, I know that they're they, you know, he was putting them over because he came down and did the spear for him. You know, made sure that. Jay, I thought you're that, talking about Jay. Was, yeah, I thought yeah. that I, I thought they, that uh, I was I was watching. Uh, Russo, I watched Russo, and Russo had the point of uh, when he said, "You know, you're, you're talking about the Attitude Era." He said the Attitude Era would have been come Monday when Rock came down and they exchanged belts, and they looked at it, and he said, "I'll see you down the road." He said, "No," nah. I said, the, "The Attitude Era would have been like, oh, by the way." Um, we won the tag match. And it was bloodline rules, and Cena and Undertaker 
and Uso that ran down for you, that was not allowed? And right. you've, you've, you have to now forfeit the belt and, and then Something have, meaningful, yes. something unexpected, now something that moves me further. Now, and take, oh. and take it away from them. Because when you look at it, it's just like, yeah, it was bloodline. We said this. We said it when we when we did the live thing. Like, why didn't why didn't they just come pile down? on and and get on top? Absolutely, of them. Yeah, and it. hold him down. Like, why didn't that happen? And then it was it's it, you. So you could have you could have you could have gave it to him and then ta- and taken it away on Monday, and have him and then have now you have the belt. that's you does it go back? It would have to go back to Roman. It would have been something. Yeah. You know, but I'm sure Roman wants, I mean, it seems to me like it's it's the off season right now. Oh, but, like but after, yeah, but oh, it's, it's horrible. It's, it's cuz three fucking hours of off season, bro. Well, I mean, bro. A, you got you got uh Becky, you got um Seth. They're not they're taking some time off. And Seth's beat up. Um Punk, Roman, uh, uh, Heyman. Uh, you had a bunch. I mean, you had a bunch of people. You've got that. They had a hell of a run going into that mania, but man, that it, it's like yeah. But but that's a perfect. Now you build on that because they had that magic for a couple of months. Keep it rolling. I texted Vince today, uh, and and I I told him I said you know it, this makes me realize when is when is Punk expected back? Oh, because that's um, a huge. I mean, you know, you can't tell me that they won't do um, unbelievable business. But the thing is, is Punk's a babyface now. Yeah. So I mean, it's like. You almost you you know that they're going to have the draft. There's no there's no way that Cody's not going to Raw. You're kidding. Yeah. With the Netflix deal, so <laughs> exactly. he's going to he, you know. So I w- I would imagine that Punk would be the first draft choice as a babyface on SmackDown. I may be wrong, but. You know, like, but your money, your your money is fucking punk and and first Cody, right? I mean, that's your money. Which, which, okay, but they 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 have to wait for Punk to wrestle, but there's right. plenty they can do with him in the meantime to start to start putting that in place. Yeah, but you don't want to. It's almost like. When Triple H tore his quad, like you want him to show up at the garden and look like a million bucks and be like ready to go. Like you want him to, you want him to come back and challenge. You want him to, you don't, if you know what I mean. It's he's got to be, he's got to be cleared. He's got to be a hundred percent. But he he couldn't fuck around with with some non match related. Nah, it's yeah, I think it's. Um, I think that the little bit he he got away with at Mania was it was enough, you know. Mm-hmm. Like he basically was was pretty. Uh, I mean, if anybody wants to kill Punk right now, it would it would be McIntyre, who also we didn't see. We didn't see. So that's what I'm saying. They just they just the show took the week off a three hour take the week off, and it was ne- it was never like and it's because. There's well, no you competition. Know, There's no one the, breathing down their neck. And, so, and not only that, man, they just got they just came off that WrestleMania run. They're over in Europe. And I'm sorry, man, but the only old school guy that's still in that locker room that's of the new era is Cody. Cody would fucking Cody would work 300 fucking days. And wouldn't bat an eye. That's why he's the perfect fucking champion right now. He's he's not going to take time off. He's going to show up fucking an hour before uh, 
anybody else does and sign 250 fucking belts. Yeah, like, but the, right, and, and that's. And that's I, I, are you saying that the, the rest of the locker room? I'm just saying that the, it, it's when you when you look at it, and they had that Iron Man thing, and it was like was Dom, um, D'Angelo, Seth, huh. D- Dom, uh, no Mysterio, uh, yeah, Mysterio. It was Dom, it was Seth, and it was Cody, and they were like 103, 108, 113 days. Like those were the 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 the, the workhorses. For the year, and there wasn't a guy in our locker room that didn't do, you know, two fifty. So, you know, Logan Paul going to uh, with Damien and them is we'll, 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 that that'll that that'll be a, a a good boost to TV. It'd be yeah, nice but- if it'd be nice if they took uh, Ron. Are are there, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe took him out of a, a, a doing a doing the step they, and fetch it routine that was in the yeah goddamn it's like ring? man it's fucking it's it, it it's I'm so over the fact that the the only uh, that they make Ron just he, he just comes across like he's he's an like I feel like I'm watching. Uh, it's almost like that segment should be on the radio. You know, he's like, come on, man. Is it, is it more of the, does it bother you because it's, again, I'm a, a black a, guy in wrestling being yes. the haha? And if I'm a young, if I'm a young, a young uh, black male and I'm watching that show, who do I have to, like who's who, who who's got a, who's got a belt? Who's the serious I, wrestler? Then I look at and I say, you know what, man, I want to do that. Right. I don't want to do that. I don't want to act a fool. That's what that is, man. That's what I mean. That's the term on the street, dude. Mm-hmm. You're acting a fool. Don't act a fool. Mm-hmm. This is this is he's this is something that's man. somewhat ep- epidemic in the sport, though. Historic, it's... historically, yes. Not not all the time. I mean, I, mean, I was I'm thinking I was, of examples I was, that are, that are I was in, of that, I was but... in the business when Ron Simmons became the first was, black champion. I was going to say Ron Simmons is definitely an exception to the. They got a little they got a little funny with the APA stuff, but but before that, when he was in WCW, Ron was Ron was the first black champion, yeah. and that was under Watts. And I remember one. I mean, I, I, and I've talked a ton of shit about Bill Watts in my life, but one thing I I, I, I did respect about Watts is that when the when when Ron was a was the champ the rule was nobody left the building till after the after that after the heavyweight championship match was over that's right that was a Watts thing that was a Watts thing and that that made that because you know if 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 Ron means something and Ron's your champion then a bunch of fucking no name fucking jabronis should be fucking trying to get in the car and fight. it wasn't like we we ran hard back then you know fucking sit and do your time and fucking maybe you'll learn something if you watch but uh Ron was a, Ron was a great champion mhm Ron was a great fucking yeah you know i mean He's you, you an look exception. Back, you, you look back at you look back at when when you know when i first started like when i came back from playing ball over in europe and it was uh, him and Butch were doomed, mm-hmm. and Nancy was their fucking manager. Yeah, and man, that was man, that was that was that was two grown ass fucking men. And that wasn't no fucking you know Amos and Andy bullshit they were doing. Right, you know. But you see, but when Ron got put with um, with what's his name in uh, APA, it it got a little goofy. Tony it got Atlas, goofy, who for but years it, it didn't it didn't get Ron never. Ron just would, would do the damn thing, and I mean they they got sticky, but it sticky, wasn't right. Ron, Ron didn't you didn't look at Ron and say anything, but that's 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 a, that's a, that's see so was number one. He was Ron Simmons, that fucking that 
was the, the uh, one of the runners up to the Heisman Trophy at Florida State. Like mm-hmm. Brown, Brown's fucking, Brown's all fucking man. Mm-hmm. No, no, ain't nobody fucking ever. It, it, no, I've never seen a fucking human being on this planet test Ron Simmons. Mm-hmm. Never. And yeah. I mean, that's that, that's the that's where's that character at? Show me that character. Show now, me that Booker. Ca- Booker was Booker's was great, but see, and that was one thing. See, they never let. I mean, Booker got a little crazy with the with the King Booker stuff for a minute, but but Book always fucking like Book always represented. Book always, you know, you, you knew that. I mean, we gave him a hard time because you know. Book liked to fish and golf, and uh, Stevie liked. Uh, Drag racing. We'd be like, man, we're yeah, Steve. They're white, Steve. huh? They're white. No, they're not. Fish and a drag they're racing. They're black, what the? They're fuck? black. They're black dudes. They, they got, the, the, but they didn't. They, they never. They didn't come across like that. No, no, not on TV. No, no, no. <clears throat> Book was a uh, a drum major. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. he was awesome. Um, if you know anything about a, a, a black drum major at, a, at any of those major uh, black universities, that, that's a fucking spot. I mm-hmm. mean, that's 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 an athlete. That's that's no bullshit. So, uh, you know what came to mind as I was watching Raw, as as I was watching nothing happen on Raw, um, kickouts. I talked about a couple of weeks ago. I talked about how it seems that everything's a you know a near fall. That aside, shouldn't a kick out? Shouldn't there be some struggle during the kick out? I was watching in, in particular the match I was watching was the uh, Dominic and Andrade match, where I mean at one point it was almost like he was getting up before the kick out. Shouldn't it look like a forced thing? Shouldn't you be earnestly trying to cover somebody? And then once I was conscious of it, watching the whole show, I saw so many of these half-hearted, half-assed. It didn't look like anyone was trying to pin You know what one of my favorites is? When you grab a leg, all right, for the and you go, Oh, you're you're cinching. You're cinching. Yeah, why? It. Why are you like? Why are you causing movement? Because it feels good on the balls. No, I'm just saying though. It's, it's like you people do that all the time. They grab it. They. It's like, what are you doing? I don't know. I think that great wrestlers, musicians, artists, whatever you are, everything you do should be given equal emphasis and perfected, including the pinfall. You know, you're not going to get should look like you were earnestly trying to get it. Imagine fucking Michelangelo skimping on on one of the fingers on the Virgin Mary in the well, Pieta. Every piece of it is is perfection. Look at the look at the tag match. And so you're you're going to break up the, the the count. It's 1 2 and you come in and you fucking slam on the top of the two guys. Why it does he roll the, off? It, it, it bra- it, no, but it, it breaks the count, but it never fucking takes his shoulders off the mat. Exactly. That's you what I was going to say. It's you still drive a his fucking shoulders to the further. And I remember it, I was watching AEW, and it was on uh, ESPN. And remember they, they ran it for a while on ESPN, like old AEW matches? And I don't know who came up with it. AEW? Is that no, I mean... uh. AWA. AWA. Oh, of I'm course. Sorry. I watched it all the time. It was on yeah. uh, 4 and o'clock I don't in the who, afternoon. Who came up with it? But they did a thing where they must have sat down and had a, like one of those things where this is the way we're doing it. If not, you get fined. Everybody that broke up a fucking a, a tag match would grab the guy on top by his ankles and pull him off Flip the him fucking off. top. But it, that broke that the pin. Fucking, that stopped the pin. And you say to yourself, like, okay. And then you fucking see it, 
it registers and you go back and you do it the same way you've always done it because it's like it's like get, getting your eyes raked and getting thrown off the ropes and you just come off the fucking ropes. You know, I want you the... to I want you to teach that when you open your wrestling school, you don't have yeah. to go. You don't ever have to go. Yeah. You, you send people to train. Make sure that they cover pinfalls. Two whole days of 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 pinfall logic. Whoever is uh, your man, instructor, it's... who would your instructor be? Who would you send to train? Who would be great to train at the Kevin Nash Tony Khan School uh, training school in Florida, in Jacksonville? Now, why got to be part of AEW? No, it's not. I'm just saying he can finance it. He could buy buy a big beautiful facility for you. Anyone I'm, can go though. It's not I'm, just for AEW. I'm good. I'm good, man. Who could we have? Pac would be great. Uh, nah, Pac ain't doing it. Pac's walking down in, the, in the canyons. Uh, let's ask Bob Nash. Bob, who would you use? Well, there's a guy out there called a fucking trainer. Okay. He need he needs bring, to make a living like anyone else. I'll bring in Al Snow. Al's, uh, Al was, okay, Al. Al, Al's, I, I'll have Al do it. Well, the two of you and working Al, together, Al, one more if, cantankerous than if, the next. Al be unbelievable. If, if Al can't fucking teach him, Al can find somebody that that, that, that that will do it. Right. But Al's pretty fucking. Al and I, most of our conversations about the business are, are pretty much on the same page. Um. I noticed it took another uh, seven or eight burly guards to hold back the uncontrollable force that is Liv Morgan when she was headed down to the ring. I like the fact that the uh, that Rhea gave a, the guy the headbutt. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure about this whole thing here. I'm a, yeah, I, you're 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 not on the train I'm, I'm here. Not, uh, I'm I'm JFK in this uh, this Ripley injury. See, I'm buying it as legit. I just I've never seen her cut that bad of a promo before. Just didn't feel from the heart. It's an AC joint. AC joint is 50 percent of the of orthopedics would say let's operate. Fifty percent would say let's not operate. Depending on if it's a, a straight, if it's a one, two, or three, usually three, four, fives, you've got to do some kind of surgical repair, but it can lead to uh, bone degeneration. It can lead to infection. Those numbers it's, you're saying, three, four, five, that's the grade of the grade severity of, of, the, of the tear. Of the, uh, well, or, or the separation. The separation. Or, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's one of those things where. So why would she do it? What's, what's in it for her? She's not going to be able to work for six months. Why would she agree to, to work an injury for so long? Why couldn't they why? have done something that would have taken, I don't know, a month? Sprained ankle. Well, you don't know the severity of it. But they're already saying it's going to be like, right, like four months, five well, months? They're, uh, they're, but uh, both, miraculously, superhuman. You did point one thing out to me back that was in, interesting. Back in eight weeks. They they waited until a couple of days after. Day after. What's her name's run? Um, day after. Uh, day, the Bailey's. day after. The day after she beats the the Bailey streak of uh, three eighty eight to three eighty nine. It's that's the, they 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 strip her. I don't know. I just. Okay. As, as, as Afa once said, I smell a rat, so. Samoan Afa? Okay. Uh, you ever, I never told you that story? No. Oh, for fucking, we're in uh, Indiana. We're at Market Square Arena. That's where the old uh, Indiana Pacers played that were ABA. Pacers in the yeah. Reggie Miller days. But uh, that, yeah, I mean, but, but it was the ABA arena is what I remember it from back when Mel oh, Daniels. Oh, that far back? Yeah, but when Mel Daniels played for the Pacers. Would you and, have knocked uh, Chuck Person the fuck out the first time he jawed at you on the fucking court? What an asshole he was, huh? All right, go ahead. You brought up the Pacers. Chuck Person's smug face came into my mind. 
see, I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking ABA Pacers. I'm thinking Roger. Thinking of Roger Brown and that crew. So therein lies the so age we difference. go so we go in there and they've got you know the market square arena is pretty pretty big so they've got a curtain. So we go in there and we and we sit down and we're we we Sean and I have been told that we're going over on Sammy and Fatu, the head shrinkers that we're going to win the tags titles tonight against them. I mean, off is their, you know, off is their, their manager. So we walk into the, in, in their, in their locker room, we sit down, they're like, so uh, what do you, what do we, what do we do for a finish? And we're just looking at them going like, motherfucker, man, nobody's smart. These guys up. And we're like, uh, you guys don't know, and then fucking Alpha goes, fucking I smell a rat. <laughs> I said, man, it ain't me, dog. And we said, man, like we're supposed to go over tonight. And, you know, fucking Junior and fucking Sammy, they were both fucking, I didn't give a fuck, but at the same time, it was just like, really? really? Yeah, exactly. Like, fucking, like, the, the, like the the click, like I'm, I'm, and I'm, I've got the IC strap in my hand, so I mean it's just like, and we went over, and I remember coming through that curtain, walking back, and fucking Bam Bam and the other guys were there, and they were just like, how many fucking belts these motherfuckers need, and of course because I never stirred shit, I turned around and said fucking all of them. And lo and behold, I won the world title. Sean got the IC, and we were tag champs. We were the fucking chaps with all the straps. Was um, so, Offa was he was their manager, right? That yeah. that's what the, the thing, yeah. yeah the reason, but he I mean, was it was like it was one of those ones where just like, oh fuck, really? We were told that they were smartened up, and you get they, and that was the kind of sh- those are the little ribs that they that Bench used to do. I got it, guys. Yeah, fuck yeah, you do. Let us go in here and fucking tell the Samoans are fucking doing a job. Um. Well, so that was raw. Very, you know, lacked uh, unpredictability. Nothing shocking. Nothing moved forward. I miss the old days. I told Russo that. Put him over again. I said, I just it's weeks like this. I just appreciate you so much more for what I got to watch. And I don't care if it was off color or it offended the sensibilities of wrestling as a contest, which I know a lot of people had the issue with Russo. Give me something different. Give me the hand coming out of a a 90-year-old bouquet. Give me miscarriages, incest, anything. Give me something unpredictable that when I turn it on, I don't know what I'm in for. Well, I just and, and if I laugh, it's I, even it's icing on the cake. If I can enjoy, it. I mean, I I don't think that you can do. I, I don't think you you can you can do that bit if you're publicly traded. What to be unpredictable? No, you can't do that. The the the, the degree. Put it this way, man. Like we've already had this conversation a thousand times. All in the family would not be aired on today's television. Network. It it wouldn't because right, but but at the time it was an important icebreaker for race relations. It's I, just I because of the that, time. But I'm just saying it's when you have, you know, it's just the. I think with Netflix we're going to see this. I just feel like that Paul or, hope, or whoever has been hinting at the direction this is going to go. God, I hope so, right? I I do. I, I I think I'm attracted to danger anyway in anything. Um, risk taking a little bit in comedy, movies, wrestling, whatever. I just think you have to push a little bit. We'll see what happens. For God's sakes, look at us carrying on for hours about the coverage of wrestling this week. What are, are we, Dave Meltzer? Are we Jim Cornette? What are we doing? Well, the I tap mean- out. That's what we're we doing. we decided we decided that we um we're gonna watch both the shows because we, we were gonna we were gonna uh purposely move to from Wednesdays to Thursdays 
for taping. To do taping. For release, yeah. So we could cover, you know. The excitement the, that is AEW. AEW. But, but I, I, on top of all that, though, is I feel that when Cody tells me that he's going to wrestle the winner of L.A. Knight versus A.J. For, for, for the, uh, to defend his belt, um, shouldn't have that been kind of the stip going into Mania? Like, shouldn't have that, that made that person, like, like, shouldn't have been more of a, it just seems like that they had that match. Right. Why not add that importance to that match? Because you were talking about that there wasn't enough build up. Someone po- was very excited on YouTube. Did you see that? Posted well, they, how much build up there has been to the LA Night match. Correct. Yeah. Us. And I, they, well, they said it was, a lot of people said it was the, the closest to an old school match. It wasn't. I'm just saying that there was there was more emphasis on LA Knight being the Slim Jim uh, pitch guy mm-hmm. than there was to to the significance of that match, which LA Knight went over clean, which is great. But now with the stip being AJ or LA Knight gets the first shot at Cody, then it's almost like. Fuck what do you think LA Knight's gonna beat AJ twice? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, that would have been intriguing. But I mean, I, I definitely think I would love to see I mean, nobody's gonna beat Cody right now. It's I mean that's you can't uh, anoint, you know. You can't anoint Roman who 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 runs for thirteen hundred days and have this build up with Cody and then have it see. Or can you? You know, does he fucking does he lose out of the shoot? I don't know. No, no, I can't. It's very, it, that, that whole scene, he, he hugged, practically made out with Triple H. This is they're going uh, yeah, in the but Cody are they direction. That, are they they're that committed. Good? I don't. Uh, that would be one. I would appreciate that. I would appreciate oh, that unpredictability. I think. The, I, think I, I think it would be just drop it at the first fucking pay per view. I would love okay, that. That would that would be mind numbing. Let me tell you, uh, the uh, the tap out this week is brought to us by our friends at Manscaped. We save balls at Manscaped. I've got on a fucking uh, a, a Navy Seal T shirt because. They sent me an XL. And I... <laughs> oh, he tried. He could only wear it on his balls, guys. With yeah, the, uh, the XL I actually, yeah, I've got that same T-shirt wrapped around my three-piece set. Got the fucking, I got the the, the fucking trouser fucking coming out the fucking neck hole. And I got a, a <laughs> scrotum out of each fucking sleeve. What do I mean by we save balls? What I'm talking about is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, which is April. Okay, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer amongst men 15 to 35. Our friends at Manscaped have partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society uh, to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. Visit manscaped.com slash TCS, as in Testicular Cancer Society, uh, to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer. And as always, you can use the promo code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, for 20% off your order, plus free shipping. It's 20% off, plus free shipping. Any of you guys that do not have the kit, there's that travel kit on the screen that Kevin talks about uh, taking on the road all the time. Um, you can do routine self-checks if you can get access down there, and you can by using the Manscaped products every day, like the Lawnmower 5.0 which is in that picture there on the right. Um, Two interchangeable skin-safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and then you can go right down uh, to the base with the foil blade. Go smooth and sleek with that. Dual LED spotlights, better visibility, making every trim more precise and hassle-free. If you don't like making a mess, best thing about this is it's waterproof. Shave in the shower, bath, the ocean, wherever you want to go. In addition to providing the right tools and solutions for comfortable, easy grooming, Manscaped is committed to raising awareness and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer. That's why they will be donating uh, $50,000 
the Testicular Cancer Society. Help save lives and balls by going to manscaped.com slash TCS and sharing their funny, educational Check Yourself video. While you're at it, grab that 20% off we're giving you, plus free shipping with the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. Because, like a famous American philosopher once said, take care of your mentals, your balls, and your chickens. The tap out today, I didn't Not know. Not necessarily in that order. Not in that order, exactly. Um, Mark Gormley is a performer that uh, I didn't know of before this. You remember, um, you remember the advent of MTV, Kevin, 1981. How old a man were you in 1981? I was over in Europe. Oh, you were already playing in Europe. Okay. So, um, so those early videos, some of them are laughable by today's standards. The budgets for music videos became like small films, but those first ones that came out shot on poor, like basically almost VHS quality. Um, a little midnight oil. <laughs> Your beds are burning. Uh, so this is a cut by someone named Mark Gormley. God help us if we have to pay for the rights to this one. But I just loved the video production, and there's one of the one of the gorgeous. I uh, think I had that singlet. <laughs> I, I I can say Michaels might have worked with that actually, or, or at least the tights he, like I that. Had, yeah, I think he had a matching hat. Here's a little Mark Gormley for the music video called without you. You feel free to tap at any time. All right, I've had enough. You you tapped on the northern lights. Jesus. Nice fault. I I tapped on the fucking guys just Stand on the clock. That that fucking first weight shift was enough for me. <sighs> hey, All anybody right. hear about the guy that fucking the pharmacist that ended up being a pedophile? Oh, I just saw him on a video. He sings without you, doesn't he? <laughs> All right, Florida man or Jersey guy, if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about here, we just finished the big tournament, the March Sadness tournament. Uh, one real headline, Florida man, one headline for Jersey guy. Um, if anyone out there, because I know there are obsessive types that uh, enjoy wrestling programming, uh, who would, l- would like to give us Kevin's cumulative record at this point, um, it's very impressive. I don't know what it is, but um, it, he does have that sixth sense for being able to uh, sort out these Bye, Dom. Two, two types. Dom Thanks. going to engineer another show, I believe. Yes. Um, all right. Here's the first headline. Man arrested for sticking head in pickle barrel. And second headline, man brings loaded gun into airport, tries to conceal it with toilet paper before getting caught. Man arrested for sticking head in pickle barrel and uh, man bringing loaded gun in concealed in toilet paper. I'm going to have to... There's, I don't know if there's a regionality to pickle barrels. I, I don't think I've ever like that's. I don't think I've seen a pickle barrel, in you know, like it's not something that's. So. But having a handgun, and being in Florida is is, I mean that's almost like. Saying, you know, guy leaves car keys in his pocket, wraps them in toilet paper. Uh, so I'm going to say the gun, the the handgun is Florida and the pickle barrel is Jersey. I mean, once again, he shoots a buzzer beater uh, and wins it. Yes, the, uh, the pickle barrel. Um, I mean, I'm here and I don't recall seeing a pickle barrel, but for God's sakes. Well, did it happen in Jersey? Maybe it didn't. Let's see. Uh, you know, it is Glassboro in South Jersey. Dunked his head in a pickle barrel. Uh, problem is, his stunt ruined an entire vat of pickles for the store owner who had to throw the food out during... And therein lies the difference between Jersey and Florida also. The uh, the proprietor got rid of the uh, food in the 
uh, pickle barrel with floating hair. Shit, you could took a damn hose, rinse them off, put them back in. Right it'd back been, in. It'd been fine. The vinegar purifies them anyway. And then um, in Florida, oh, there's the actual uh, barrel. Yeah. This is the guy? Is this the individual or the owner? He's wearing, it looks like he's got a, the, uh... oh, no, there's, oh, the, there's, there's a, the guy. There there They're trying is. to ID the guy like he's a. It's like he's the, one of those two idiots that were fucking destroying the national rocks, fucking formation. And did you guys, do you guys, do you see that national rocks? That's like there. It's like maybe in Monument. I don't know what fucking state park it is, but these two fucking idiots go up on top, and it's like the red rocks. You know, they've been there for millions of years. And these idiots are fucking toppling these rocks down the side. Were they of hitting the... it with a with a sledgehammer or something? No, they no? were just fucking just because you know they've been balancing up there. It's like you know the it's like the wily e. coyote with the rock that sits on top of the you know. And then finally, if I get it, it fucking falls on wily, e., you know. So here, here, they, they, here they, they are. Here they are. Let's, oh here, let's Jesus! Just... Wow, Look Lake Mead. Yeah. Holy fuck! These are grown ass men, huh? And they've got their daughter in the background, and she's like going, Daddy! she's oh screaming. She's like maybe 13 or 12, and she's these morons are just, it's like. Oh, my, you know, I just envy the fucking time people have. I don't have a second to wipe my ass. Could you imagine just like, what was the thought pattern? Hey. You know what we should do is we should climb up an unstable rock formation with our child, get up there, and then tip the rocks out over the end. Okay. But there's no thought patterns. Is is I think that absence of thought. I think if you have a high powered rifle, that you should be able to 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 just target practice those fuckers, pick them off right there. eh? Yeah, just boom. Put him out Don't of hit the misery. girl. Don't no, hit the girl. But you, God, you, no. But she's far enough to the to the right that oh, yeah. you could probably. Or maybe just. Oh, and he know, almost takes one. You see there? He, yeah. He was pushing the rock he was standing on, Kevin. You should see that there's. I was watching the news, and like there was, there's one where there's this, like this huge rock that's probably on, I don't know, maybe two feet of of a base, and it's. It looks like a mushroom, and mm-hmm. a guy. This some. It looks like the the, the fat fucker in, in that video, but doing the same thing. And the guy like reaches over and it pushes it and pushes it, and it breaks off and falls, and he's like, "Who are you?" And they're saying that they they they, they could be fined into up to eight months in in jail. I'm thinking, really? Like, that, like that's it? Right. But I guess like when you. Go and put you. If you actually go to, if you go to jail, it's one thing. But they put you in the hole. They put you in prison. But you ain't. If, if it's eight months, you ain't going to prison for eight months. Yeah. That's that's county. Yeah. Plus, you wouldn't want to take up a spot for all the people smoking marijuana that are filling uh, uh, the, well, the or, jails. Or actually, they, 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 they got caught with you know thirty four grams. Right. Trafficking. The trafficking charge, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you who's not getting hit with the trafficking charge. My friend Mickey Ray Sinatra. Welcome to the high spot of the show. Because oh. Delta 9 THC sip and syrup get blitzed lit aid is Lazigo everywhere. Shipping right from Maryland to you. Uh, you can visit the Stay Lit Smoke Shops. In Maryland, but um, if you don't live there, it is legal to order and ship. Uh, have shipped from the uh, Get Blitzed website. What am I talking about? I'm talking about nano infused Delta 9 sip and syrup. I created a flavor this week, Kevin. I haven't, oh. it, it's, not, it, it, it's not my favorite. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to tinker a little more. Um, but what I did was I, got, I took some, ch- I took a Coke, a, a Coke Zero. Put a teaspoon of cherry to do the uh, to do a cherry, cherry a cherry coke, which did give the cherry coke experience. But I think I can get better. 
than that. I'm going to try something with the, with the raspberry next, and I will report that next week. Raspberry um, and cherry together? No, no. I'm going to try. I'm going to try raspberry. Oh, and, okay. I'm going to try to make a summer drink with the raspberry. Maybe that'll be the Sean's raspberry, and then maybe there'll be Kev's key lime. I can't talk yet. Big things coming from Tom Collins from uh, the uh, our friends at uh, at Get Blitzed. But yes. the Delta Nine sip and syrup, all you need is a teaspoon. It's super potent. Um, it's THC on steroids. It's a syrup. You mix it in any beverage, like a tea, a white soda. And um, as little as a teaspoon, fast onset, five to fifteen minutes, and it's, it's a sipping experience. When you, when you hammer those those gummies and stuff, they all go down. And what's here, you can sit, put your feet up, like Kev's gonna want. What are you gonna watch tonight, Kev? You gonna you gonna gonna put your feet up and put something on the tube? Um, I don't know. Where are I, we with playoff basketball? The play in the play ins the uh, the. Uh, the- the plans were were la- well. Last night was the Eastern Conference. What uh, Atlanta and um, yeah, I saw it. I didn't get to watch any, but anyway, I thought Miami gave it. Gave I mean Miami should have. Miami was up like seventeen, eighteen points, and just shit the, the bed. Lakers. Yeah, Lakers won, and Sac- Sacramento knocked out. Uh, Golden State. I was remember I gave Dom. That was my or, or the two thousand to one pick was Sac. I gave Sacramento, so they're still alive. Still alive. Yep. Guys, go to get blitzed dot com. See what I'm talking about. Get hyphen blitzed dot com. If this is something you're into, this is the place to go. Get hyphen b l i t z e d dot com. Try the Delta Nine THC sip and syrup lit aid from. Get blitzed. Use the promo code CLICK, K-L-I-Q. Save 15%. And stay tuned for some exciting news from Get Blitzed and Click This in the near future. All right, we're back. Click This. We're back with our friends from Blue Chew. As always, Blue Chew, the unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. Once again, sponsoring us here. At click this. Guys, remember the days you were always ready to go? Needed nary any provocation to be ready for action. Um, now you can get back those days, okay? You can increase your performance and just be ready to go. Just get some extra confidence that's all about. You don't need a dysfunction. You just need that little extra confidence, a little something to put you over the edge. Be ready to go with the drop of a dime. Bluechew.com. Take them any time, day or night. Just plan ahead. Be ready to go whenever the opportunity arises. The process, so simple. You're going to go to 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 bluechew.com. You're going to consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Best part, all done online. No visits to the doctor's office. No awkward conversations. Waiting in line at the pharmacy. Um, This works. Trust me, our our uh, fans here post testimonials all the time. The time we want to help you have better sex. So guess what, fellas? We're gonna give you a free package for your package sent discreetly to your home. Okay, go discover your options at BlueChew.com. You're gonna chew it and you wanna do it. All right, we got a special deal. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code Nash N A S H. At checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code NASH, to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for being one of our longest sponsors on the podcast here. And that gets us into Ask Nash. Hashtag Ask Nash. This is how you can have all your deep-seated questions answered. Chris Kelly Big Kev, for a while in 2002 and 2003, yourself, HBK, Hunter, X-Pac, Billy Gunn, and Kurt Hennig were all in WWE at the same time. An NWO versus DX storyline never happened. Why not, and what would would it have looked like? I never thought about that. If that's true. And it seems well, it wasn't... was Scott Scott wasn't there, right? 
No, it would have been you, Sean, Hunter, Sean, Billy, and Kurt. So it would have been Kurt and I, and Kurt was never really in the NWO. Like, wasn't, I mean, it was here and there. He was with the Horsemen, and he, he turned on at, at the uh, War Games. To, to, he turned so we could fuck Flair. But you basically got all the DX besides China versus me. But you could, well, you, you could have flipped Pac because he wore the black and white, so he could have crossed. Yeah, but then it's, it didn't happen because it didn't make sense to happen. All right, very good. Preston Fabre. I what never did... gave I never gave it a thought because it just didn't It wouldn't have lined up the right way. Right. Uh Preston Fabre, what did you and your wife choose your first dance song at your wedding and why? My wife and I were married this past August and went with Bob Seeger's classic We've Got Tonight. He'd like you to sing a few bars as well. Um What, what was is... your what was your song first? We fucking eloped. We didn't have a wedding. Oh, oh, I was trying to identify the tune for a minute. Then fuck came in, and I figured maybe it was uh, the guy from before with the without. But I sang it in the 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 the, the theme of the Bob Seger song. We've got tonight. We got tonight. <laughs> Very my wife good. Went to, it was. I was working uh, as a. The floor manager to strip joint and it was one of those it was one of those deals where if i had a wedding i couldn't have one of my girls invited to my wedding if i didn't have 130 and i just didn't think 130 dancers strippers at the at, yeah. at my wedding was probably going to be go over very well with my my mom so brilliant i i i i, I uh So fuck that. Honey, uh, Starflower would like to give you the gift. Can you open the uh, the bag for the envelope now? Tim Hayes asks, uh, okay, uh, Tim Hayes is giving you a Dead or Alive Detroit Tigers edition. All right. Chet Lemon. Alive. Correct. Al Kaline. Dead. Dead. Lou Whitaker. Alive. Alive. Denny McLean. Dead. Alive. Is he? And Willie Guillermo Hernandez. Alive. Dead. Um, Live audience. What do we got here? I didn't know that Denny McLean was still alive. Yeah. Name the time, Sean. Please read the following names ah. and have, give us thoughts on the person. Okay. Danhausen. Don't really know him. I mean, I, I met him at, we did a signing together in Detroit. We, we, we sat and waited to get a ride back. We talked for you know 20 minutes. Seemed like a really nice guy. Okay. Barry Wyndham. Uh, was friends with Barry before I ever got in the business. Rikishi? Great. Harley? I loved Harley. You still have a, the great Harley story with the the, the yeah. never-ending ash lace in the yeah. boots, and that was, yeah, that but was I mean, the, the WCW. The line. time when we when we got when we basically came sliding in sideways to Walter Reed Hospital with the cops, we're, we're going to ninety miles an hour the wrong way down some. <laughs> I'm only going one way. Was so were you doing the the hand the. Were you doing the handoff of the beers to him? It's supposed oh, to be always Jesus, the, the one hand while he had the that other motherfucker. Hand over the, I don't. I don't think he drove a, a Cadillac. I remember one time we were driving. I think the Cadillac was was the governor was set at 106, and it kept bogging down. He was going so fast, you know, because it would shut down. It would shut off, and uh, he says he goes ah, something wrong with the. Uh, Fuel filter. I'm like, no, Harley, it's your foot. Jesus, Harley, you're killing me. Uh, in the kayfabe days, we Billy did a Gunn, show. Billy Gunn was, I mean, I've, I've always been, I mean, you, you can't not love Billy Gunn. 
Billy is so much fun. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's just there's no I don't I, I, there's nobody that's got a bad word about Billy Gunn. Great energy too, like just being. Yeah, he's just a him. good guy. Yeah, one of those. Guys, he was one of those guys that when we were doing three hundred plus days and not getting paid, you know, it was like he still had a smile on his face. We did a show in the kayfabe days called uh, The Great Debate 08 during the presidential debates. We said, well, why the hell not have the two heads of state of wrestling come and have a presidential style debate? So we brought in Bruno and Harley and we had them do behind the podiums. And I asked, I was the moderator and I did the general Didn't you class. show me some of that? I, I didn't. It's it's probably all over there. Yeah, I thought, I, thought you, I thought you showed me some of it. It's on... Um, the internet but so the best part about it was before the shoot as every production is 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 the time before the shoot harley's plane was very very late so and we're in you know fuck wad pennsylvania and uh so we're shooting this like at midnight right so watching the dynamic of bruno and Har now you know bruno was like clean living and in shape and working out until he was probably until he kicked and Harley had, there's some of it, and Harley had, the, you know, the, the perennial cigarette in his mouth all the time. So watching the two of them talk and the joy that Harley had that they were so different, like, he's like, I got to have a bite first, Bruno. And so he goes, his wife brings him chicken fingers and he sits in the corner, he's eating with a cigarette going. And Bruno's like, Harley, you're still smoking. He's like, yep. As he's smoking, he's talking to me. He's like, ah. Bruno's like, oh, I get to bed usually around 10 o'clock. I'm up at 6 in the morning. Harley's like, I don't get to bed before 2. And I was like, this is the show. This is the debate. Fuck their prepared answers they're going to give me. Those two talking about their lifestyles is the show. And that was a very rare uh, moment I had that you don't at the moment realize is a historic thing. And then you lose people like that. And you go, wow, it, uh, it's cool. Ah, uh, let's see. What? Who else from the house here uh, has some love? No, we had, didn't talk about. We didn't talk about the fact. Didn't, didn't they uh, seat all the jurors today? Twelve. I just saw twelve got seated. There were two disqualifications. I guess. Uh, yeah. But they, so what, they, do they still need six alternates. I don't know how many alternates, but yeah, they would need. Yeah, to. They, they, they needed six. Could you? Uh, could you do it? Could you be a no. juror? No, and and I, I think could. that I could be absolutely unbiased. I could go in and not have any whatsoever. I but would just... I, I'm not saying that I'm biased. I've I've read too much to go in without any preconceptions, and I think you have too. Well, I, I but I I would still I would go in saying I. I know what I've been told. Now let me hear from the actual people, the two, the lawyers. Yeah, I, I, a, I, I, I mean, I, I'm sure Rachel Maddow uh, and uh, Hannity's uh, viewpoints are completely different than than they're, they're going to hear. Um, you know, opening arguments. I just think I, I could do it. I just think that I could sit there and just, because I, I really believe in our system. And um, if it's done right. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to see. Uh, getting an update here. Juror number three described as a corporate lawyer who said he's not very familiar with the other charges Trump faces. Juror number seven described as a man who is a civil litigator and has children. So lawyers, lawyers on the, so I guess, I guess a lawyer would have to separate, right? I don't know. I don't know. We'll I, I think it'll be interesting. Uh, someone I don't, I just audience. don't see that they've got enough. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to, to wrap this up into a, something that's a, a felony. I think, he, I think they're going to get them on a bunch of misdemeanors. Right. Uh, anyone else from the house have anything while we're here? Kevin uh, Gilbalt 
Sean, any new shoot interviews coming up? This is my shoot interview every week. I, I, yes. I, it's Groundhog Day, timeline Kevin Nash uh, shooting every week, and they're about as long as the uh, as the K Yeah, shows. I, I, I love I love when people say to me like, "Hey, uh, it's, I, I get a text every day for somebody. Hey, I, I, I'm starting a new wrestling show. I'd like you to be on it." No, like this I'm is on this it. is. Yeah, I'm on my I'm on, I, mean, I do my wrestling show. I do my show. It's like we did way too much wrestling today. Yeah, we did. We did a lot of wrestling. Well, we did a lot of everything. We're at two and a half hours here. Two hours forty three minutes, whatever. Uh Ryan from the gym. Heads up. I'll get to that one in a second, Steve. Heads up, Kevin Nash. August twelfth, twenty forty five. Next solar eclipse is coming through your hood. Uh, are you I'll going to dead. Disney to watch the eclipse with the I'll mouse? Be dead. 2045. That is 22 years from now. You'd be a spry 87. I'm dead. Questions from the house. Too hard and fierce. Anyone tried Easy E's beer? How is it different than any other beer? I don't drink. Yeah, listen to that. Is that Easy E as an Eric Bischoff, or is that the dead guy from? No, I went right to I went right to NWA. I right, guess it's I Bischoff. Yeah. Uh, anyone else in the house want to close us out here? I'm sure, we have our regular Humberto Ramos. NBA playoff time finally. Knicks Lakers are in, and hoping my Sacramento Kings. Win and play in tomorrow again. Win and play in tomorrow again. Will you guys be watching the games? I will. I, I always try to get catch some playoff basketball, but I I watched both. I watched both books. of the West, and I watched the first. Uh, I watched the um, Miami Philadelphia game last night, and then my wife gave me the fucking. If you watch another basketball game, like shoot. It's like the, the tournament I watched it nonstop, and then because the women's tournament, because uh, of Caitlin, Caitlin, I I I watched the women's tournament, and it was like there was a basket, and it's like, and she so it's over with. She sees Connecticut cuts down the nets, and then all of a sudden she's like, so we want to watch it. I'm like, wow, well, like. Kind of, if we can just if you don't, oh. if mind like the Lakers, the Lakers play tonight, and she knows that's my team. Is I'm a I'm a Lakers fan because my favorite player growing up was Will Chamberlain. So once Chamberlain went to the Lakers, I became a Lakers fan. So I've been a, I've been a Lakers fan since. And I mean, even when Detroit was winning and had the bad boys, they were still my second favorite team. The Lakers were still my favorite team. Hmm. So, wow. Yeah. Yes, Humberto. I'll I know be Kevin watching. Will be going hardcore. I'll see I love basketball. That's my, that's my, that'd be my jam. All right. What more can we do? 246. Click this as a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast yeah, T. T's pissed. Creative. <laughs> T's like, fuck that. Let's go home. I'm hungry. Uh, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, Sean Oliver, producer Steve Kaufman, graphics Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, though I'd like to get that guy that did the video today to do a mm. cut of this. Technical or the research. guy from the, the, the wrestling uh, show. Oh, the, uh, the, the, the ras- I'm going to the wrestling. Oof. Copyright 2024, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, what do you say? Are we doing another? Ask the psychics.
the customer service never answers the thing. Now